quick story time. Imagine there is a mystical force that holds great knowledge, that has the power to inspire, enlighten, and shape the world. This force is managed by magicians and wizards who keep the force healthy and thriving. However, this force is surrounded by a moat, and the only way to get in is by a bridge. However, the bridge is blocked by a troll who demands payment every time someone wants to enter. So every time a magician or a wizard has business to do in the forest, it has to pay this troll in order to enter. Now imagine you're a traveler that wants to check out some of the wisdom that the forest has to hold. Well, guess what? You also have to pay the toll. And it's funny because this force is not owned by the troll. You and members of the kingdom, as well as the magicians and wizards, are the ones who keep this force healthy and alive. Okay, you can probably guess by now that this story is not fantasy, because it happens every single day in science. The magicians represent the scientists who want to share their findings with the world, as well as keep science alive. And the public, through taxes, fund these scientists through grants and scholarship. The trolls, of course, are for-profit academic publishing houses like Elsevier, who charge for the publication of journal articles as well as the subscription to their collection of reputable journals. And the troll is most definitely the villain of the story. Actually, you could say that there are five trolls you need to know about. Elsevier, Wiley, Taylor and Francis, Springer Nature, and Sage. But by far, Elsevier is the largest with 16% of the total market and more than 3,000 academic journals. As a result, the landscape of academic publishing has been characterized by limited competition and high concentration in few key publishers. This concentration of power has raised concerns over issues such as rising subscription costs, restrictive licensing agreements, and limited access to science and research due to paywalls. Let's just focus on the biggest and the baddest one, Elsevier. Founded in 1880, making it older than Coca-Cola. This Dutch company, under the parent company Relex, has grown in net income from 2010 to 2022, generating higher profit margins than Google, Apple, and Amazon, according to Dr. Danny Beck. So what does it take to run a publishing house? There are wage costs for the editorial staff, distribution and printing, production and formatting of manuscripts, Nowadays, a lot of the process is digital with online infrastructure, which includes website and server maintenance. Finally, there's also licensing and copywriting fees. But how much staff does Elsevier employ, you may ask? Well, according to their website, approximately 8,700 people. That's less than Google or Amazon. To be fair, these trolls argue that they provide value by ensuring quality in academic research, as opposed to predatory journals that publish anything without peer review or scientific rigor for a fee. However, this doesn't justify the continuous and steep rise in costs associated with access. The spending on academic journals by university libraries has increased by 521% between 1986 and 2014. According to the University of Virginia, they paid Springer Nature in 2018 $672,000 for access to a bundle of 4,000 journals. 1,400 of these journals were not accessed once. What? Sounds familiar to those TV bundles that sell you a ton of channels when you only really need a few. So how have these university libraries responded? Well, in 2019, a bunch of institutions in Norway and Hungary canceled their contract with Elsevier. Institutes in Germany negotiated with Wiley for open access at no additional cost. And the University of California decided to ditch Elsevier when they wanted higher pricing for open access. Throughout the years, editors-in-chief and editorial staff have resigned in a principled move. Heck, this year. April 17th, 2023, 42 editors from NeuroImage Journal resigned and started their own nonprofit journal called Imaging Neuroscience. 
to, quote, replace NeuroImage as the top journal in our field. Well, what caused them to leave? because publishers refused to reduce the fee from $3,450 to below $2,000. Doesn't sound too unreasonable, but a troll does love its coin. What a lost opportunity for them too, right? Because they could be spearheading this open access initiative, but no, at every turn, they choose to obstruct the progress in the UK as well as in the US. They're stuck in the mud trying to hold on to the past. Elsevier has made several attempts to undermine the passing of open access legislature in the US and in the UK. And their motives to protect their profits go so far as to support fossil fuels and blocking climate action. Their parent company, Relics, has contributed thousands of dollars to political candidates who obstruct climate action and at the same time providing oil and gas industries with, quote, information about exploration areas and techniques, legal resources for expansion and research and development for new technologies needed for fossil fuel development in non-conventional areas, such as Arctic and tar sands environments. Shame on you. And so much for a company whose mission is to advance science and improve health outcomes for the benefit of society. Lol. Meanwhile, while you're being Boo Boo the Fool, Elsevier, a consortium of institutes in Germany decided to broker a deal in 2019 with Wiley for open access articles and access to the publisher's journals for a single fee. And we all know that the only constant is change. And it's hard for a troll to change, but it's harder to pity a troll that's unwilling to change. So is it all doom and gloom for the future of scientific publishing? Fortunately not. The Texas Library Coalition for United Action and Elsevier have decided to test out a pilot project where they give the ownership of the articles back to their authors, as it should be, instead of, you know, Elsevier owning the copyright. And this frees up the authors to do whatever they want with their work. And finally, in a new policy that will be fully in place by 2026, the U.S. Office of Science and Technology policy demands that academic journals provide immediate access to publications and scientific works that are publicly funded. Elsevier responds that they are looking forward to working with the research community to better understand the guidance in detail. Bombastic side eye. So in the meantime, what can we do? What can the average Joe do? to help with access in science. Here are five possible broad solutions that uh, may address some of the problems moving forward. Um, if you've exhausted alternative methods such as <coughs> Sci-Hub. So one, Elsevier does have cost-effective options, but it makes me think of Netflix and what we've done with Netflix and password sharing. If an individual science reporter has a subscription annually to a journal and they make that password shareable, then what can Elsevier do to prevent that? Hmm, I don't know. Because Netflix tried to crack down on it and it didn't go very well for them. Give the people what they want. Second, if you're trying to get access to an article that you think will really uh, illuminate things for you, then just reach out to the authors. Scientists are more than willing to teach you what they know and share their knowledge. Third, we should advocate for open access journals that publish good quality and rigorous science. However, right now, not all open access journals are created equally, but that's another discussion for another time. We strive to one day have a set of reputable journals that are open access, nonprofit, and peer reviewed. Because the OSTP is there to provide expertly guided decision making and not enforcement, we still have to make our voices heard to our representatives and continue pushing for open access. And finally, looking towards the technological future, 
we can be more aware of how blockchain technology can make science decentralized by putting the power back into the hands of the people and the scientists. Protocols like Molecule, Absentia, and LabDAO are just some initiatives to make funding, IP, peer review, and experimentation more democratic and collaborative. We have to put on the pressure in order for change to happen, and change will happen. I hope you enjoyed this conversation. Thank you for joining me. I'll see you in the next one. Ciao, folks. It's giving off Game of Thrones vibes, like when they're forming alliances and stuff.